Back in February, I made a video complaining about the weariness I was feeling after playing a whole lot of AAA games that all had the same exact streamlined control scheme. If you haven't seen it, basically, I went on and on about how classic survival horror games use controls that were purposefully awkward so that they'd evoke particular feelings, and how, after 15 years of genre convergence, even horror games now star action heroes as easily controllable as any other. And even though your usual WSAD control scheme is a whole lot more intuitive, the feelings those old controls evoked has pretty much melted away with them. So Necrodancer feels like a dose of medicine. Whereas these controls were cumbersome because they were intended to scare the player, these controls are cumbersome because they intend to groove with the player. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a rhythm-based roguelike with a highly original control scheme that has you dancing your way through a Dreadmore-style tile dungeon, either until you beat the boss and reach the exit, or the song ends. Every action possible, from moving to attacking to looting and even menu navigation, is bound to just the four directional buttons. You walk into tiles with enemies to automatically attack them. You walk into doors to automatically open them. You walk onto loot to automatically pick it up and equip it right on the spot. The process of managing your inventory is just a matter of choosing which tile to hop onto. A score multiplier that gives you all sorts of benefits encourages you to do all those actions to the beat of the background music, and then to hold that beat. And that changes what would be a below-mediocre dungeon crawl into one of the most fun and hilarious gameplay gimmicks this side of Nidhogg. You have to constantly move to the music or else your inputs will cancel. You can't just walk from one end of a room to another. You have to dance your way from one end of a room to another. Combat has you dancing in and out of enemy movement patterns as the both of you tango your way to an eventual death. Those limitations on movement and the game's musical pacing have you ditching old action game habits, so you can just tune out to the music and go with the flow, but at the same time you still have to observe and react to the horrible dangers everywhere. It's an enchanting attempt to tie the player's ability to hold a beat with satisfying gameplay rewards, and when it works, the process looks something like this. You could play it with the dance pad if you wanted. There's even an option for that. For the first time ever in my life, I really wish I had one. Both so I could have something to do while burning calories, and also just to see how different the game plays with it. It's fun to note how the dance pad mode increases the window for beat detection even wider. Anyways, since the player's time is divided up into split-second beat intervals, you have this weird combination between real-time and turn-based gameplay that has to be played to be fully understood. The musical test here is far more complicated than simply obeying a button prompt. You have full freedom of movement, exploration, and a very tactical kind of combat. You're luring enemies into choke points to the beat, you're parrying to the beat, you're flanking and retreating to the beat, breaking into a moment of clarity where you're sinking your sense of rhythm with your sense of strategy is an unfamiliar sensation. It's a new skill that I had a blast learning. Rounding out the exploration of that new skill is a plethora of options. Multiple characters, challenge modes, practice modes, new game plus modes, local co-op, and a level editor are more than enough to bulk up the replayability of its admittedly limited four dungeon types. But what I had the most fun with is the custom music option. You can import any MP3 of anything. I don't know what I expected, but slower music without a consistent beat kinda breaks the system. The default music is a deep, bouncy Danny Baranowski soundtrack that was clearly made for this style of play, but later on in the New Game Plus modes you'll go through the same soundtrack remixed by different artists, but you can always put a few tracks of Hotline Miami over them to give yourself a hell of a treat. Yeah. 
When you're not bobbing along to this mental balancing act between music and combat, you might be watching a handful of seconds of inconsequential cutscenes out of the 8 to 20 hours this game could last you. If there was ever an example of a story tacked onto an idea that was always gameplay first, this is it. Which is probably the most minor gripe I have about Necrodancer. More major are the occasional moments where this music-based action gameplay just does not work. It happens when the screen is crowded, noisy, with barely animated enemies that all play by different rules. It happens when you're cornered, alone and under-equipped, with nowhere left to dance to. The screen gets pretty messy, and your methods for movement and attacking are always awkward. It can be a lot to take in, and sometimes it's hard to see what killed you at all, even though it always makes an embarrassing amount of sense when watching the replay. Sometimes I just can't seem to handle stress, music, and video games all at the same time. But even outside of my own inadequacies, a game this unique is bound to have a few balance issues its first time out. It seems far too feasible to just ignore the beat completely and slash away at enemies as they run towards you, rather than actually doing the dance. Your four-way movement limitation is so heavily emphasized that it's easy to forget that a couple of late-game enemies can move diagonally, which you will never be able to do. So being killed by a diagonal-moving enemy never felt fair. On the other hand, the few projectile weapons in here are so monstrously overpowering that there can be nothing fair about them either. So I exploited, and felt exploited, on my way to a wonderfully creative final boss for this wonderfully creative game. Whatever may not work here is a minor inconvenience, less noticeable than the sheer joy of seeing old archetypes in a way that feels brand spanking new. In broad strokes, the only real substantial change between this and a traditional turn-based roguelike is that your turns have to be made under a real fast time limit, and it's funny how just one major tweak like that can make it feel so refreshing. You're tackling old problems in new ways with this game, and that's an itch that I've been needing to scratch for a long time.